Sound ID reference from Sonoworks is the speaker and headphone calibration software that enables you to deliver consistently accurate mixes that translate perfectly to other sound systems. Hi, Ed Thorne here, and I'm showing you how to set up Sound ID with your audio interfaces and guiding you through the process, informing you of some best practices along the way. Now, I'm guessing by the fact you've clicked on this tutorial that you already have or are about to purchase Sound ID, so you know what it is. For those of you who don't, just quickly, Sound ID is a piece of software that calibrates your headphones to widely accepted user preferred response curves and calibrates your speakers to produce a flat EQ curve, taking into account the frequency response that your speakers produce in your listening environment. Now, this is typically heavily influenced by the sound of your room, and the software goes a long way towards fixing frequency peaks and nulls caused by speaker boundary interference interference, reflections, and phase issues. This setup process will work with any audio interface, not just the one I'm demonstrating in this video. Sound ID is supplied as both a system-wide application that runs in the background and as an indoor plugin. Using the system-wide application means your correction profiles will be applied to all of your audio applications, including Spotify, iTunes, YouTube, your DAW, games, and so on. In your DAW, you will need to assign Sound ID as your output device. Now, it should be noted that if you use analog outboard gear for a hybrid setup or a Dolby Atmos setup and your interface provides the I.O. for this, you will need to use the plug-in version of Sound ID instead of the desktop version, or you won't have access to the I.O. if you have selected Sound ID as your door's main outputs. Using the door plugin only affects audio out of your DAW session. Note you should not use both at the same time, otherwise you'll have twice the correction and a very inaccurate sound. To use Sound ID as a system-wide application, select Add New Output. Select your audio interface. And then if you just want to use headphone profiles, select Add Output. From here, navigate to select New Calibration Profile and then add a new headphone profile and a menu of makes and models will appear for you to choose from. There are calibrations for hundreds of makes and models of headphones and Sound ID regularly adds new headphone profiles. In the door plugin, you'll see you can select presets on the left or you can select your calibration profile and add headphones as we did previously. We'll discuss the additional features you can see here and what to do when you've loaded a calibration profile later in the video. So getting to the business end of this software, to measure your speakers in your room, we need to create a custom calibration profile. To do this, we can use the open measure option once we've selected an output device or navigate to select your calibration profile and create new speaker profile if a device is already selected. A new window will pop up and guide us through a very simple process, but first we need to prepare a condenser microphone and the audio interface. Make sure your audio interface is connected to your computer and select this as your system's input and output device. On a Mac, navigate to System Preferences, Sound, and select your interface. Make sure your speakers are connected to the audio interface. The next item is we need a microphone. Now, in theory, it is possible to use any condenser microphone with omnidirectional capability. But bear in mind, all microphones have their own unique sonic profile, and this will affect our measurements. So we need a microphone that comes with a calibration profile .txt file. <laughs> so, so what? Exactly. Most microphones aren't supplied with these. However, if you know what I'm talking about, you will already likely have a specific measuring microphone with a calibration profile and you can use this. If what I just said makes no sense to you, don't worry because I strongly recommend using the Sound ID XREF20 measuring microphone anyway. This mic has been designed specifically for the task of speaker measurement and to work with this software. And the mic is definitely worth getting so you can measure other rooms or re-measure your room if you move stuff around in the future. Connect your Sound ID microphone to your interface. Engage phantom power. Run through the following checklist and make sure your microphone signal cannot be heard through your speakers. 
click next and then check that we're getting signal, input signal detected. And select sound ID reference microphone. Click through and assign your outputs to your audio interface and test that the left and right speakers are the correct way round. This is important. Click through to the speaker volume adjustment screen and test the volume. A series of voice cues will inform you how loud the speakers need to be, adjust accordingly. It's worth turning your microphone gain down to zero at this point to avoid a feedback loop. And I also suggest turning up your output slightly louder than needed so you don't have to use as much microphone gain later. The reason being, budget-friendly interfaces like the Scarlett, for example, get quite noisy at the top of their gain range, and we want to minimize any additional noise that may influence the measurements. Then follow the on-screen instructions to prepare your measuring area. Clear the area so you have room to move around because you will be taking measurements from various locations around your mix position. I like to use a microphone stand for this process so the mic remains at the same height for consistent readings. The microphone should be positioned at ear level, parallel to the floor, facing the middle point between your speakers, which is most likely your monitor screen. Move the microphone into your listening position and turn up the input gain on your interface. Sound ID will produce a series of sine wave sweeps and clicks to measure the input gain and instruct you to turn this up or down accordingly. All good. Next, select your preferred metrics. Then we need to measure the distance between the speakers. Stand to the side of each speaker and hold the mic no more than an inch away from the center of the mid-range cone or whichever cone produces one kilohertz. Sound ID is listening to how far away the other speaker is at this point and how each speaker sounds up close. Then place the mic in your listening position and repeat the process. Once completed, Sound ID will check with you it has measured the distances correctly. In this next step, the software is going to tell you where to move and position the microphone to take readings in 37 positions around your seated listening position. Follow the on-screen position guide to move the microphone into each position. This will take about 10 minutes to perform. Once the measuring phase has been completed, Sound ID will compile your profile. Press save. Then we need to go back into the Sound ID app or door plugin and load in our new profile. We can see the results in both the system wide application, and once we've loaded the profile into the door plugin, they will also appear there as well. The before curve is our speaker's frequency response in our room. The calibration curve is what Sound ID has calculated and is the opposite to the before curve, which when active is effectively cancelling out the discrepancies, creating a flat frequency response. As you can see in my room, I have some problems. In an ideal world, this would be flat, but the reality is no room is perfect. There is a steep drop off below 50 Hz because the Neumann KH120s don't produce audio below that. There's a null at 90 hertz that's strangely worse on my left side. I have a large build up between 200 to 400 hertz, a small dip again at 800 to 1K, and then some pretty nominal fluctuations up the rest of the frequency spectrum. If you're thinking this is a terrible room, you're right, it's not great, but I have seen much worse. If your results do come out worse than this, fear not though, it is very common. Now, if you can fix these problems with acoustic treatment and trial and error with better speaker placement, then great. Trust me when I tell you I have tried everything to alleviate these issues in my room, but the shape is just not ideal. And this is the best I could get. But I'm happy for Sound ID to do the heavy lifting. It works really well up to about six decibels worth of attenuation. Sound ID has some killer additional features on top of the flat target calibration we've just measured. It should be noted that Sound ID is now Dolby Atmos compatible. 
you'll notice the different target system EQ curve and my profile adjusting with it. The custom target section gives us the option to tweak our calibration curve. We can manually EQ it using parametric Q points and we can high and low pass the calibration if we're happy with how the low or top end sounds. And the best bit are the translation checker profiles. Sound ID have measured dozens of consumer devices, including car stereos, headphones, earpods, IEMs, laptops, smartphones, televisions, and even famous studio speakers, so we can check how our mixes sound on these kinds of devices. This is effectively removing the need for alternative sets of speakers, running out to the car to check a mix, and swapping through endless sets of headphones. We can also invert the outputs and mono the whole system, which is always a good trick when mixing. Your mastering engineer will thank you for using Sound ID, and I've no doubt you'll not go back once you've tried it. Your mixers will translate better onto all of the systems immediately. I've placed links in the description below to purchase ID. Here's a video demonstrating the translation checker profiles and how they actually sound. I've been Ed Dawn. It's been emotional. I'll see you on the next one.